This is the video for Saturday, for Friday, December the 27th, and the market did nothing um, because it's the last Friday of December, and it's just after Christmas, and it's coming up to New Year, um, so we were flat. But decliners led advancers by about 13 points, and it's important to now look at the market breadth indicator, which did not, for some reason, and I don't know why, did not reach the overbought line, even though we had advancers to decliners slightly edging throughout the week. I guess the dif distance between the two moving averages declined, and so it dropped, meaning that it's probably on its way back down again to the neutral line, and I'm going to introduce uh, something new, which is the Sentiment Trader website. Take a look at it, sentimenttrader.com, and look at his blog page. He provides a free newsletter every day, um, and this was the one from Friday. He tracks so many different kind of market indicators, but the one I want to point out to here is the equity pull put call. When stocks are rallying after when, with stocks rallying day after day, the put call ratio for equities only, that's not for ETFs and uh, not for indexes, it's equities only, has been pushed to its lowest level since June. 2014. Almost more than twice as many call options as put options. That would indicate a lot of bullishness. But when there's a lot of bullishness out there, typically the smart money will come in and clean up what the dumb money has invested in the market. So when the put, when the equity put call ratio made a one year low, the S&P returns over the next one to three months were quite poor. So just remember that. Keep reading the rest of it. Now we'll go look at the charts and we'll look at the S&P, which both of the momentum indicators are at their top. This is yet another sign that we're on our way down. So we've got Sentiment Trader, we've got the uh, McClellan Oscillator, we've got uh, <laughs> We've got um, the stochastic momentum indicators both way, way over the overbought line, saying that we're ready for a bit of a correction. Apple ended the day down slightly. Um, it was off to a good start, but it's now come down and it's tested the 61.8% again, which we said that it likely would. Now, where is it going to go from there? But look at the size of the volume. It's only showing a red day because the stock was actually down a little bit yesterday, but not down, uh, not down much. It finished at exactly 290. This is what you call pinning the options. That means that the people who bought the 290 calls and sold the 290 calls didn't make any money. It was actually the market makers who uh, kept the money from the bought calls and got their money back on the sold calls. And you'll see that happen quite a bit with Apple, where it will tend to finish on a Friday around an even number or a number ending in a 5, or if there's 7.5 um, options that week, it might finish there. But that happens more often than not. Uh, look up um, equity price pinning and read about the history there. Some people believe in it, some don't. Uh, Caterpillar, just sort of not doing anything, pulled out of this bull pennant, now on a little bit of a wedge up, so we can say now that we're watching a trending channel, and we're going to be looking for price crossing the top of that channel for any breakout in Caterpillar. Um, Home Depot, Finish the day above the eight. It's been flat now for one, two, three, four, five days. So all week, including Friday of last week, it's been flat. But I still maintain that we still could be trying to make a push into this thin area 
of the cloud. Now we're doing a little bit of a downturn in this stochastic momentum index, but this one, the longer term one, is still going up. Volume is still quite low. AT&T down three cents, finished at the bottom of its range. WDC, um, it's a shame we can't get rid of these. I've reported this to Motive Wave that we can't get rid of these, uh, these things, but I'll do it temporarily at least. Display get rid of alert history. So you can see we've gone down now into the gap again. This gap is closed. So we should be able to close that gap, get rid of it, um, and now just watch for it moving upwards from the gap back to this 6531, which is surely uh, where it's expected to go now. Whirlpool, um, really not doing anything, pretty disappointing. The slower moving SMI is still moving up so for the long term, it's looking good for Whirlpool. I would be looking for this to bottom out anytime soon. And um, we might have an opportunity to step in here like we did here, where we had this movement up. And then we had a confirmed uh, SMI bottoming, and then we had the move up. So this, this wave up here is all part of a larger one. Shopify um, had just this doji day in the middle. Um, don't know if you've gotten into that one. It looks like it's possibly ready to take off. And Amazon pulled back, looked like it was going to have a great day. Uh, my robotic vacuum cleaner in the background, if you can hear it, is stuck on something. So I still think now that Monday, the rest of the trading days for the year, one and a half days left, could be seeing going nowhere or actually starting to drop going into January.